out of all the generations, Generation 4 introduced the largest amount of evolutions for Pokemon of previous generations. While this was a pretty cool addition, it almost felt as if a lot of the Pokemon that are native to the Sinnoh region were overshadowed by most of these new evolutions. Because when I personally think of the Pokemon from the Sinnoh region, besides the super popular Pokemon and the obvious starter and legendary Pokemon, the only other Pokemon that immediately pop up in my head are these evolutions, and not actual Pokemon that are from the Sinnoh region. Because of that, I feel as if the Pokemon that need Megas the most from the Sinnoh region are not actually the strong and popular families and evolutions, but rather the weak and forgotten Pokemon. So in today's episode of the Top 5 Potential Megas, we're going to be going over the Top 5 Potential Sinnoh Mega Evolutions, with our primary focus being on weak and forgotten Pokemon. Because just like the Johto region, this region suffers from having a good amount of Pokemon that don't do too well in battle. And also Pokemon that people tend to forget about. No starters and legendaries on this list of course. If you haven't seen the last episode of the series where we covered the top 5 potential Hoenn Mega Evolutions, then be sure to check that out first. But if you're all cut up, then let's jump right into the top 5 potential Sinnoh Mega Evolutions. Number 5, Cricketoon. Whoop. <laughs> what a terrible impression. <laughs> Whoop is what this Pokemon is known for, because pretty much everything else about it isn't memorable whatsoever. Cricketoon is the early bug type of the Sinnoh region that doesn't get mentioned too often. If I asked you about early bug types, you'd probably mention every early bug type from all the other regions but I doubt I'm hearing Cricketune come out of most people's mouths. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if people thought that Burmese evolutionary line was the early bug type of the Sinnoh region, cause Cricketot didn't show up as often as the other early bug types, and when it did, it and its evolution really didn't do much but give us a fantastic cry, and it's pretty weak as a Pokemon. People including myself do love Cricketune, but that's mainly cause of the sound that it makes, so rather than focusing on its weaknesses, we're gonna focus on its strength of sound. This Mega Cricketune from Naiji turns Cricketune into a full on insect composer, which is pretty dang cool and fitting. Not only does it have a great design, but I think we can make it have a pretty cool ability called Orchestra, which makes it so that all sound based moves get a boost for 5 or so turns. Of course if this is the case, we may have to switch from being a physical attacker to a special attacker so that I can take advantage of the sound based moves as well. So give it a huge buff to special attack and a good buff to speed so that it can conduct an Orchestra and voila, Mega Cricketune. Number 4, Luminion. A beautiful Pokemon with a fantastic and simple design, yet easily, easily one of the most forgotten Pokemon of all time. I'm really not so sure as to why Luminion's so forgotten, but I have a feeling that part of it has something to do with it being so rare to find or see in the 4th generation games, cause it was always the one Pokemon that was missing in the 4th gen Pokedex. You'd think that that alone would make it memorable to me, but no, I still somehow forgot about it. The Mega Luminion by Smiley Fakemon turns it into the unexpected Water Poison type. Despite it being called the Beautiful Eye of the Sea, I still rather give it the Poison typing than the Flying or Fairy typing cause, cause this design stays true to Luminion's real world counterpart of the Freshwater Butterfly Fish, and overall just makes it more aquatic looking. While Luminion was never too great in battle, it's always been a bit of a speedy and defensive type. So we'll mainly boost those stats, and give it a small boost to its offensive stats. And we'll also give it an ability called Poison Rush. That makes it so if a Pokemon decides to switch out while Mega Luminion's on the field, it gets pursued out before it leaves, but for less damage while becoming badly poisoned. Cause with those venomous spikes on its body, it's definitely poisoning everyone before they leave. Number 3, Carnivine. Now I'll be honest with you, I never really cared about Carnivine all too much. It was always kind of just there, and even in the anime, James's Carnivine was never that funny to me or anything, even if it did just do the same job as James's Victory Bell. It's not that great in battle, although I do think that its design is funny looking, in a good way of course. Honestly, besides that, I don't know what else to say, and I think that's exactly why it needs a Mega. This Mega Carnivine designed by Austin Furno gives Carnivine a more exhilarating look, but despite that, I think we're going to keep it speed pretty low. If anything, we'll raise it just a bit. We'll put most of its stat boosts in its defenses so that it can take hits better and buff its already good attack stats a bit more. 
We'll keep its typing as pure grass, but most importantly, we'll give it an ability called Vine Trap. Vine Trap will be like a combination of Sticky Webs and Shadow Tag or Mean Look, an ability that slows down the opponent and prevents them from switching from the many vines that Mega Carnivine has. <laughs> it plays on Carnivine's whole Venus Flytrap origin as well. Not only do I think that this will make Carnivine more memorable, but I also think that will make it so that it's a Pokemon used for some really fun double strategies. Number 2. Luxray So we're done focusing on the less popular mons, and we're making our way to the more popular ones because Luxray is definitely a fan favorite from Sinnoh. Its cool and sleek design and early accessibility with Shinx is what led many people, including myself, to use it over and over again on our teams. On top of that, it's quite a strong mixed attacker with the intimidated ability, so it's overall just a great Pokemon. I would say the only two problems with Luxray are that its speed stat should be much, much higher, and its typing shouldn't be pure electric, but rather electric dark, just like how most fans want it. So with Mega Luxray, if you have a galaxy design like the one that Zeruda's made, it'd almost be impossible for Game Freak to deny us of the electric dark type. This will give Mega Luxray a powerful boost to moves like Crunch and Night Slash, and also make Mega Luxray the only Pokemon of this unique typing. Of course, we'd have to give it a massive buff in speed, with it gaining anywhere from 30 to 50 points there, and the rest dispersed into its other stats. We could focus on its attack as well, but it'll have the strong job ability, so so as long as it's using the fang or biting moves, it'll already be getting a good boost. This along with the fact that regular Luxray comes in with Intimidate means they'll be crippling Pokemon and then beating them down for intense damage and just make the fan favorite Pokemon seem even cooler. Honorable Mentions For today's Honorable Mentions, we have a whopping 5 Pokemon. Starting off, we have Frostlass, cause Glalie has a Mega Evolution, so it's only fair if Frostlass gets one too. Next, we have Drapion, cause to me, it's one of those underrated Pokemon, or slightly overshadowed Pokemon, but it's one that's pretty dang cool, so I thought I could use a Mega, but Luxray won the Twitter poll, which is also cool cause I clearly had a very hard time putting Poison types on this list, cause for the next three mentions, we had Skuntank, Perugly, and Toxicroak. I think you can see my dilemma here. I want to add one of these three mons onto the list, and the most fitting one would have been Toxicroak, but it didn't seem right for me to put on the ace Pokemon of one of the Team Galactic admins and not the other two. So I left them all out of the list, but I did manage to squeeze one Pokemon from the team onto this list, and that Pokemon is number one, Weavile and Gliscor. I know that I said that I was really trying to avoid the evolution mons, but I have a really good reason as to why Weavile should receive a Mega. If we were to assume that the starters were to receive Megas, then between the main three trainers that you face in the game, two out of the three would have their ace Pokemon be a Mega. But Cyrus wouldn't. Sure, Cyrus can just use Mega Houndoom or Mega Gyarados, but a Mega for his ace Weavile would be so much more fitting. I'll be honest, Gliscor is literally only here as Weavile's counterpart. Trust me, I love both these Pokemon pretty much equally, but Weavile probably deserves a Mega the most out of any Sinnoh Pokemon. Although, this would make it so that the doors open for a brand new trainer to be a part of the Sinnoh region with Mega Gliscor. Our great Mega Weavile was designed by Tommy Case, and our great Mega Gliscor was designed by Kaideka. Mega Weavile and Mega Gliscor will retain their types of Dark Ice and Ground and Flying respectively. Mega Weavile will mainly get a stat boost in its physical attack and speed, while Mega Gliscor will get more of a balance buff to all of its stats by special attack. The reason for this is because Mega Gliscor will have the new exclusive ability, Mega Luck. An upgraded version of Super Luck that raises the critical hit chance of Gliscor by two stages to play on the fact that it can learn the most high crit ratio moves of any Pokemon. Because of this new playstyle, Gliscor has to tank hits without toxic heal and dish out high critting moves. It's kinda trolly, and I think that fits its design. And Mega Weavile, on the other hand, will have the ability, Tough Claws to help it with his physical contact moves and help it with his reputation of being a great physical sweeper. This ability also fits his design really well cause those claws got huge. Overall, both these Pokemon were already amazing to begin with, so regardless of whether or not they received a well deserved Mega, they'd still be fantastic Pokemon. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed the 4th episode of the Top 5 Potential Mega Series. Next week, we have the Top 5 Potential Unova Mega Evolution, so 
be sure to stay tuned for that. If you enjoyed, be sure to hero punch the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button. Let me know how you feel. Comment down below your thoughts and opinions. What did you think of the Megas on this list? And what Cinemegas do you want to see in future generations? Let me know. Share the video if you want to help support the channel. And finally, subscribe to the little bell icon if you want to stay up to date with all my content. Take care of yourselves, have a wonderful day, and I will see you on the next video, alright? Later.